Hola, hola a todos. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Espero que estén muy bien. Hoy vamos a aprender de los objetos de complemento directo e indirecto. So that means direct object pronouns and indirect object pronouns. First, we'll do a little review of direct. That was the, the end of Spanish one. And then we will jump into indirect object pronouns. So if you're a little confused, we'll have a review and hopefully this will help. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so here we have a picture. There's a man, un hombre. Um, él está recibiendo una pizza y está hablando por teléfono. El señor está hablando por teléfono. Y él está diciendo, sí, mi amor. So that means he's probably on the phone with his wife. Yes, my love, sí, mi amor. And then we have a little word here that you may or may not know what it means. This word here, less. And then he says, estoy cocinando la cena a los niños. Okay, estoy cocinando. This you probably recognize from Spanish one. That is the present progressive. So what you use when you're talking about things that you're doing at the moment. So cocinando is a form of the verb cocinar, which means to cook. And then estoy is the form of the verb estar that goes with yo, the first person. So that means I am cooking, right? I am cooking, la cena is dinner, and then a los niños, in this case, would be for the kids, for the boys, or for the kids, for the children. Um, so what does this word mean here? This happens to be an indirect object pronoun, and in this case, it means for them. So if you translate this, this bubble, he's saying, yes, my love, I'm cooking dinner for the kids which is kind of a joke because he's not, right? He's receiving the pizza. But um, what I wanted to point here or bring to your attention is that word, less. It means for them, to them, from them, depending on the context. So he's saying, yes, my love, I'm cooking the dinner for the kids. So he's cooking the dinner for them. So less means for them. I know it may sound redundant or repetitive to say for the kids and for them in the same sentence, but that's just the way we speak in Spanish. It kind of sounds weird, I know, but it's not incorrect. It's not grammatically incorrect in Spanish. Okay, so we'll look at a few examples of when uh, to use indirect object pronouns, where specifically they go, which from this sentence, you can see it goes right before the verb. In this case, you have two verbs and it goes right before the first verb. And, um, you know, that has to change according to who is receiving the action indirectly. So the kids are receiving the action of the cooking according to this sentence. He's cooking. What is he cooking? He's cooking dinner. For whom is he cooking the dinner? He's cooking for the kids. So less would be the indirect object pronoun that we need for los niños. But let's take a look at direct object pronouns first because this uh, explanation that I just gave might be super confusing for some of you. You're like, oh my goodness, what is she talking about? I'm totally lost. So let's see. Let's take a look. Let's rewind a little bit of direct object pronouns. Okay. So, okay. Let's look at this picture. Um, hay dos dinosaurios, dos dinosaurios, la mujer y el hombre. And she's saying to him, tú nunca me abrazas. Okay, tú, you guys know it means you. Nunca, you may or may not know this word, it means never. And then me abrazas. Abrazas is the form of the verb abrazar, which means to hug. And then she's saying, so she's saying, you never hug me. Notice that the me doesn't go after the verb, it goes before. That's what happens with direct object pronouns and indirect object pronouns. They go before the verb. Now, the subject is to, that's the subject of the sentence. The verb is the verb abrazar. It's conjugated, of course, to the form of you, to. So it's not an AR, it's an AS. And then the direct object pronoun goes before. Okay, so tú nunca, well, she, she said never. So tú nunca me abrazas. You never hug me. It would not be correct to say tú nunca abrazas me in the order in which, speak, we, in which we speak in English. That wouldn't be correct. So tú nunca me abrazas. 
And this is kind of sad because he has really short arms. <laughs> so, you know, no wonder he doesn't have her. Él no la abraza. So here I could say él, the, the dinosaur, he. Él nunca, he never hugs her. To say her, it's la. That's the pronoun that we need for ella, for her. Él nunca la. And then because I'm using third person, I'm saying he, he is the subject. Uh, the verb abrazar, the ending is just a. That's the ending that we need for él. Right, so you may you may need to refresh a little bit the endings of AR verbs, ER verbs, IR verbs, depending on the subject. So if it's an AR verb and it's about yo, it's o. If it's about you, it's es. If it's about he, she, usted, usted, el, ella, usted es a. If it's about nosotros, amos. If it's about ustedes, ellos, ellas, and, right? So we hug would be abrazamos. They hug would be abrazan. He hugs would be el abraza. But we're saying he ne never hugs her. So la is a direct object pronoun that we need for ella. So actually, let's look at a few more examples uh, for you guys to find what's the direct object and what's the direct object pronoun, okay? So basically to figure out when you have a direct object, you have to figure out who or what is receiving the action of the verb. The verb is the action word. Um, so it's important to you know, go, go back to the basics. What is the subject of a sentence? What is the verb of a sentence? What is the object? So the object is what, what or who receives the action of the verb that the subject does. And then once you know, what the direct object is, then you can figure out what direct object pronoun you need. So let me give you just a simple example. If I say, I eat chicken, okay? That would be yo como pollo. Como from the verb comer has been conjugated, of course, to the form of yo, which is the O ending. So yo como pollo, I eat chicken. Okay, so what is the subject? Yo, what is the verb? Como, the conjugated form of the verb comer. And then what is the direct object? The chicken. The chicken is receiving the action because the chicken is being eaten by me. So um, that direct object is what receives the action of the verb. So I eat the chicken, right? I eat chicken. Now, if I wanna say that I eat it with rice and I don't wanna be repetitive, I don't wanna say I eat chicken with rice. I already said that I eat chicken. I just wanna say I eat it with rice. It would be the word that I would use in English to replace chicken. But what's that word in Spanish? So if you remember from Spanish one, it could be lo or la, depending on the gender. If it's masculine, it's a masculine noun, lo. If it's a feminine noun, la. Pollo happens to be a masculine noun. So we're gonna say lo, we're gonna choose lo. So to say I eat it with rice. So yo, and it's going to go right before the verb. So the verb is como, so I'm going to put it here. Yo lo como, I eat it, and then I'm going to say with rice, con arroz. Okay, uh, let's look at another example. Let's say I listen to the song. Yo, uh, oh, listen, escucho. La canción. So, yo is a subject, escucho is a verb. It's conjugated to the form of yo because the infinitive is escuchar, but I conjugated it to the form of yo. And then what do I listen to? I listen to the song. So now I listen to the song. Let's say I wanna say, I listen to it on the radio. So what's, which one of the two it's am I gonna use for la canción? La canción happens to be feminine. Words that end in cion are feminine. And the article la, which means the here, tells you uh, that that is feminine. So, so if I wanna say I listen to it, meaning la canción, what it do I need? I need la. Notice that it's the same as this. So la could mean the, if it's in front of a noun, like the song. Or it could also mean it if I'm replacing that noun and it's feminine. So I listen to it on the radio. Yo la 
escucho en la radio. Okay. And radio is also, um, in this case, it's feminine, la radio. Okay, so it looks like an exception to the rule because usually o, words that end in O, nouns that end in O are masculine. Okay, so yo, this la means it. I listen to it on the radio. Okay, let's look at more examples. Let's say you watch the movie. You watch the movie. Tú ves, from the verb ver, it's conjugated to the form of you, so that's why we see an S here, an yes. Tú ves, and then let's say la película. Okay, so you is the subject, this is the verb, la película is the direct object. Now, what direct object pronoun do I need for la película? Do I need lo or la? La película is feminine, so I'm gonna say uh, la. Now, let's actually switch it up a little bit. And now I wanna say not the movie, but la, the movies. So you like to watch several movies on Netflix. So I'm gonna say, tu ves las películas, and I don't know, let's say horror movies, de terror. Yeah, and I wanna say that you watch them on Netflix. You watch horror movies on Netflix. So you watch them meaning the horror movies. So now to say them, I cannot use lo or la because that's it. For them, it would be los or las. And again, we have to pay attention to the gender. Gender is feminine because películas is feminine. So I'm gonna say tu las ves en Netflix. Okay, again, las here does not mean the, like here, here it means the movies but here it means them, meaning the movies. So it's kind of, I guess, easy to remember which pronouns go with what. If you, you know, look at it this way, you know, las películas just becomes las, you just drop, drop películas and you have your pronoun. So hopefully that helps. Um, so tú las ves en Netflix. So you watch them on Netflix. So again, it always goes right before the verb and the verb of course needs to be conjugated according to the subject. So who is doing the action? Okay, so here we have the pronouns, all of the direct object pronouns in English and in Spanish. So in this order, me or me in English is me in Spanish. You is te, him, her, it, or you is lo, la, as is nos, you, like in Spain, os, them or you, los, las. So let's look at some examples. If I have here, um, I have here, mi amiga Julia come papas fritas. Mi amiga Julia come papas fritas. Come from the verb comer, she eats, right? So my friend Julia eats french fries. And then I want to say, she eats those french fries with ketchup. But I don't want to say french fries again. I just want to say she eats them with ketchup. Which one would I use if the sentence is about, so if the direct object is papas fritas? She eats those french fries with ketchup. Is it los or las? You know that's feminine, so you're going to choose las. Ella las come con ketchup. Okay, so this is the right answer, las come. Los is only for masculine. It also means them, but it has to be a masculine thing that it's replacing. In this case, papas fritas is feminine. Okay, let's say, let's look at the next one. Mi esposo bebe café en las mañanas. So bebe from the verb beber, which means to drink. It's conjugated to the form of el. Mi esposo bebe café en las mañanas. So what does he drink in the morning? he drinks coffee. So coffee is my direct object. Now I need to replace it with a, with a pron direct object pronoun that is masculine because cafe is masculine. So it's going to be lo. And I want to say he drinks it with milk. So el lo bebe con leche. Again, right before the verb. The verb is conjugated, of course. El lo bebe con leche. 
Okay, let's say um, this one is about mi mamá. Mi mamá come frutas todos los días. Mi mamá come frutas todos los días. So she eats, again, come is conjugated to the form of ella. So that's why it's e. Uh, él and ella always have the same ending, right? Él, ella, and usted. They always have the same ending. So in this case, come. That's why come was the same uh, conjugation in the previous, which is about, oh no, sorry, that was baby. Um, but the same ending, just an E. Okay, so mi mamá come frutas todos los días. And then I want to say that she buys them at Publix. Here I'm using the verb comprar, which means to buy. So she buys them at Publix. Oh no, sorry, comprar. That's the infinitive AR. Um, ella, so frutas is feminine. So I'm going to have to use the feminine them. So ella las compra en Publix. Okay. I'm not talking about the days. I'm just saying that she buys them every day. But what does she buy every day? What receives the action of the verb? The fruits. The fruits are, are what is bought. So, ella las compra en Publix. And just a reminder, los días, even though you see an A there, days are masculine. So, we don't say las días, we say los días. Okay. Uh, let's go to... Now, direct and indirect object pronouns. So as you can see here, direct object pronouns are very, 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 very similar to indirect object pronouns, except for the last row. The lo, la becomes le, and the los, las becomes less. But other than that, the first two rows are the same. In English, they're all the same, so it's, that's why it's kind of confusing. Um, even with subject pronouns, like for example, te uh, and tu, they both tra translate to you in English. But tu means you when you are doing the action, when, you're, when you are the subject. Let me use a different color. Tu means you, but if you are the subject doing the action. Te means you if you are directly receiving the action. So for example, if I want to say your mom visits you uh, every summer, that would be tu mama. And this doesn't, does not mean you, it means your. Tu with the accent means you, a subject pronoun. Tu without the accent means your as if something belongs to you, possessive adjective, so your mom. And then your mom visits, visita, from the verb visitar, conjugated to the form of ella, um, visits you every summer. So I'm going to put it here. Te visita. Um, let's say every summer. Todos los veranos. So in this case, this te means you, but not you as you're doing the action, but you as you are receiving the action which in this case is your mom visiting you. She visits you. She does the action and you receive the action. Okay. And, um, and then here this, te, it also means you uh, receiving something, but not directly. In, in this case, it's indirectly. So somebody does something for you, to you or from you. So let's look at some examples. Okay, so if I give a gift to my mom uh, on Christmas, what, how could I write that sentence? That would be like this. So the verb dar. Dar is uh, to, in the yo form is doy. Okay. Uh, it's an air verb. And normally you would just put an O, but in this case, it's irregular kind of like the verb ser, which to say I am, you don't say so, you say soy. So that is similar to the verb ser in that way. In the yo form, it's oi, doy, doy. So to say yo, um, I gave a gift to my mom. Okay, so if I want to say I give a gift to my mom, uh, yo, doy 
un regalo a mi mamá. This may sound correct to you, but it's actually not. We need the indirect object pronoun. Otherwise, otherwise it's incomplete. And where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it right here. Okay, right before the verb. So for my mom, for her, what should I put? If it's ella, if we go back, you should remember that it's le. That's the one for él, ella, and usted. So... Yo le doy un regalo a mi mamá. Yo le doy un regalo a mi mamá. Let's say I want to say I'm going to send a gift to my mom. So using this structure, going to. This is the verb ir. You may or may not need to refresh this one. But to say I'm going to send. So we have going to and then the verb send. So yo voy a enviar. Enviar is to send. Boy is I'm going to. So I'm going to send. This one remains infinitive, of course, because you're not you're not saying I'm going I send. I'm I'm saying I'm going to send. There are two verbs. You conjugate the first, not the second. So enviar un regalo a mi mamá. Okay. So again, I need to put the, the indirect object pronoun right here. So yo le voy a enviar un regalo a mi mamá. When you have two verbs, you actually have two options. So you could put the indirect object pronoun right before the first verb or attach it to the second. So it would also be correct to say yo voy a enviarle. So yo voy a enviarle. And this becomes one word. Enviarle un regalo a mi mamá. So to whom am I sending the gift? To my mom. She is the indirect object. And the indirect object pronoun that replaces my mom is le. Okay. And let's see. Okay. And now let's say I want to say I'm going to buy a watch for my niece on Christmas. So I want to do something for someone. I'm going to buy something for someone. In, the, in this case, for my niece. So that would be yo voy a comprar. I'm going to buy. And then a watch, un reloj para mi sobrina. That's my niece. So... I'm going to buy a gift for her. So that should be yo le voy a comprar un reloj. Uh, in this case, actually, this para should be ah. So, so if, if I'm just saying I'm going to buy for her, I could say para mi sobrina. But if I'm using the indirect object pronoun here, I need to say le, le voy a comprar. And then ah, yo le voy a comprar un reloj a mi sobrina. Okay. And then last one here, if I'm, gonna if I'm going to take something away from somebody, so from somebody, um, I could say, let's imagine I have a guitar and my cousin borrowed this guitar three years ago and he hasn't returned it. So I need to take it away from him. So I could say, yo voy a quitar, quitar means to take away. Uh, mi guitarra a uh, mi primo, my cousin. So because it's about him, le. Yo le voy a quitar mi guitarra a mi primo. Okay. Now, if I'm talking about more than one person, so for example, here, I don't want to say that I'm going to give a gift to my mom or that I give a gift to my mom, but to my parents. So that would be a mis papás. Then, of course, this direct object pronoun would become less, right? Because I'm talking about mis papas, my parents. It's two people. Okay. Let's say I'm talking about my kids. So I'm going to buy a gift for my kids. So here, uh, yo le voy a enviar un regalo, let's say, a mis hijos. So that should be less. Les voy a enviar un regalo a mis hijos. So this is where 
um, that picture at the beginning of this presentation makes sense when the guy was saying, uh, les estoy cocinando la cena. So I'm, I'm cooking the dinner for them, for them, for the kids, less. He used less, right? Because it's for the kids. Okay, there are some verbs that uh, we can say that are very useful with indirect object pronouns. They kind of like trigger uh, the use of indirect object pronouns. Like for example, escribir, which means to write. So if you write something, you write something for someone, you don't write on somebody, right? You write maybe a letter, a text, a card, something for someone. If you give a gift, the gift is for somebody. Uh, if you give something, again, you give that to someone. You cannot, you know, uh, give it to the air. You have to give it to somebody. If you say something, you say it to someone. If you ask some for something, you have to ask someone for that something. Preguntar o responder. So that's to ask a question or to answer a question. Again, that has to be done uh, to someone or for someone. Enviar, to send, mostrar, to show, ofrecer, to offer, servir, to serve. All of those verbs require that you do something and then that something or that, act, that an action is done for someone, from someone or to someone. Okay, so let's look at this example here. Uh, yo escribo, email, escribo emails o correos electrónicos um, todas las semanas. So I write, escribir is the verb to write. Yo escribo uh, correos, emails, correos electrónicos would be the proper way, but nobody uses it. So yo escribo emails todas las semanas. Okay, sorry, I got an interruption. Um, I was saying I write emails every week and I write them to my students. Uh, I write the emails to my students. So I'm writing them. Oh, sorry, I'm not even sharing. Okay, ejemplo numero cuatro. Yo escribo emails todas las semanas. So I write emails every week. Now I want to say I write uh, to my students and my colleagues. I write to my students and my colleagues. So I write to my students and my colleagues. They would be the people receiving those emails from me. So because I'm talking about uh, the students and colleagues, that's ellos. So I have to write less, okay? So less escribo a mis estudiantes y a mis colegas. Okay, a mi mamá le gustan los perfumes. So she likes perfumes. So I wanna say that I gift her a perfume every year. Now, regalo comes from the verb regalar, which means to gift. So here it's conjugated to the yo form. So I gift her uh, a perfume every year. So because I'm talking about my mom, she's the one receiving the perfumes from me every year. I'm going to say le, okay, le regalo, to her or for her. I gift these to her or the this perfume to her. The perfume is the direct object and my mom is the indirect object. She receives the direct object, which is a perfume. I do the action of gifting and she receives the action of gifting and she receives the gift, which is the perfume, which is the direct object that is given. Okay, um, this one is cuando termino mi comida en un restaurante. So when I finish my food at a restaurant, pido from the verb pedir, that's the your form of the verb pedir, which means to ask for. So here I'm saying I ask for the bill and then la cuenta. And then uh, to whom do I ask or from whom do I ask the bill? From the waiter, el mesero. So... This is L because it is a, it's a male, so le. I ask him for the bill. Okay, and then we have three more examples. Mis hijos son bilingües, so my kids are bilingual, and I teach them English and Spanish. So yo les enseño inglés y español. 
Who do I teach? Mis hijos. What do I teach them? English and Spanish. That would be the direct object, but the, but the indirect object is mis hijos and the indirect object pronoun that goes with mis hijos is less. So yo les enseño inglés y español. And here, me gusta tener reuniones en mi casa. Cuando tengo invitados, ofrezco comidas y bebidas. Because I'm talking about what I offer my guests, I offer them drinks, uh, food and drinks, but I offer it to them, and to them would be less, right? Les ofrezco comida y bebidas. Mis hijos reciben dinero todos los domingos. My kids receive money every Sunday. Mi esposo y yo, so nosotros, that's the subject, we do the action of giving. Uh, damos, from the verb dar, we give. Nosotros damos cinco dólares. So we give them five dollars. So that would be les damos. We give them five dollars. And then last one here, cuando ves personas que no tienen casa y, pide, y están pidiendo dinero. So when, when you see this from the verb ver, it's conjugated to the form of to, when you see people that don't have a house and are asking for money, ¿qué haces? What do you do? Do you give them money? So here, because you're talking about them, the people, you're saying you're giving money to them, you should use less, right? You give the money, money would be the direct object, but the people that receive the money would be the indirect object. So what indirect object pronoun do we need for ellos? You need less. Okay, and that's it. I hope you guys are more familiar or understand better how to use direct and indirect object pronouns. It may be even better um, the English language as it is, right? The grammar in English. Uh, if you need any help, of course, I'm here to help you guys. Just let me know, okay? Chao, gracias.